Welcome everybody out there yeah, today to our next webinar uh, here at JFD Brokers. A warm welcome in the name of JFD Brokers as well, as always. And um, yeah, you see uh, temperature is quite high here. So if you see carefully to my screen, then you can see 29 degrees still out. Um, but anyhow, I think uh, it as um, for, for you, it's as warm as here. Maybe we have uh, people from really weird countries outside, um, or not weird, but at least uh, very far away. But I don't know exactly. Anyhow, today is the uh, 16th of August, 2018. Yeah, it's uh, seven o'clock usual time for those kind of webinars. And my name is Stefan Friedrichowski and uh, you know just uh, call me uh, Stefan whenever you get in touch with me here in the chat in uh, via email whatever just call me Stefan that's fair enough and uh, you see already my email address <clears throat> written on the first page it's uh, s.friedrichowski at jfdbrokers.com later you will see that we will have quite a uh, couple of excel sheets once again so if you um, want to receive those just send me an email and i will make sure that you will get them um, the other um, let's call it announcement is uh, simple as usual as well uh, you can already download all the slides of today's webinar via the go to webinar control panel uh, then you have the slides um, as a pdf document title today the deviation from randomness is our trading chance i can promise you that finally we will find real edges for our trading activities but you know me i will clearly derive them and um, it's not um, just to throw out uh, what are the observations uh, and what are the edges no it's always a question how to derive those edges um, and i just want to share those ideas with you and even how to do it by your own uh, therefore um, the opportunity that you have those excel sheets uh, from me as well so we know that in principle stock prices in general are really close to random if they would be completely random then we can stop trading that is a sentence i think i have um, said already a couple of times during the web webinars so it's our task to find the deviations from randomness because then we are in a situation that we have a real trading chance and it's a little bit about statistics today but it's really um statistics in a way uh like throwing a coin and you know okay it's 50 50 and some um, uh, some derivations out of uh, those formulas so a little bit uh, mathematics uh, will appear today as well but it will give, give us a real chance and therefore i hope you stay tuned uh, even if we look to a lot of numbers and excel sheets um, today good but before we finally start you know I have always, oh, uh, slide is not coming. Uh, so I have always to show our risk disclaimer. And um, since we have new ESMA regulations, even the disclaimer has changed, um, but not finally the, the main content. And the main content is as always, if it finally comes to trading, you trade always for your own. Um, I think that's uh, self-explaining, uh, but as always, I share that slide and I share those kind of sentence, uh, sentences that um, trading is simply your own responsibility. Okay, having said that, we can really start. So a little bit more in detail about deviation from randomness is our trading charts. So indeed, our starting point is that we look to throwing coins around. And we know that throwing a coin is really random we don't have to prove it um, maybe um, we, we can think about some manipulations about that coin but that's not the topic <laughs> but we know definitely what happens if we throw a coin and the similarity between throwing a coin is later that we look to 
long candles and short candles. And you know, we all know, we know that we have sequences of maybe eight um, long candles in a row, but we have to see how random is that kind of behavior. Therefore, that comparison to the true and really pure randomness of throwing a coin is quite important and will help us to understand the basic ideas and will help us a little bit more that we know later that if we investigate, for example, D1 candles and we go back for about 15 years, then still the number of candles is quite limited. It's about 4,000 uh, candles. So we have to know what might occur even under pure randomness if we have a limited um, selection like 4000 later we go down the road to age one then the statistics become even more better because then we have for uh 10 15 years history we have about 100,000 candles so then we get quite better statistics but we have first to look a little bit more into the real randomness and that is simply throwing a coin by chance, two days ago, just one day before the German webinar of uh, this uh, topic here, um, I found a Facebook post and um, at uh, Geo. Geo is a German magazine. It's more a travel magazine and some other interesting topics. And there has been an article about the game Schnick, Schnack, Schnuck. Okay, I know today we have the English one. I have no idea whether that name is telling you anything. It's it's the other name is um, is uh, stone, scissors, and paper, and that is a game uh, for two people, and you 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 do something similar to a handshake, and um, then somebody wins that game. And the funny thing is, that game is once again as throwing a coin purely random, but there has been an investigation showing that if humans are playing that game, there are some chances, some edges, so you can use some certain statistics in order to have an edge for that, um, for that game. And that comparison is quite impressive because later we talk about our candles and, and candlesticks and um, when we talk about the candlesticks, um, um, then we have to 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 um, we have to do something similar, um, like that game. We have to to anticipate what candle comes next, and that is a little bit like um, that that game. And then um, we we want to predict. What comes next? And that is exactly what we want to do um, um, when, when it comes to trading, because we want to predict the next move, the next candle. And if we can do that, then we have that edge. And even for that, in principle, purely random game, schnick, schnack, schnuck, um, you can find edges. And the, answer, the, the real reason behind this because of human, that our stock prices are driven by human behavior. So it might be interesting to, to use those kind of similarities. So we start with the pure randomness, investigate that, so that we know what happens if we have limited numbers, because uh, then always statistics um, becomes um, poor, uh, like if you have 10 candles, so then to, to have a real statistical analysis about 10 candles, then you can find everything. So we, we have to know what happens if we have limited numbers and um, that we will do first. And then we adapt all those formulas, all those kind of methodologies to real stock prices or better to say, not a stock, it uh, will be Forex and uh, it will be um, the DAX future. And even where I have a question here, can we find a real edge? The answer is obvious. Uh, I would not share that topic with you if there would not be an edge. On the other hand, if I would not find any edge, then it might be my final webinar because um, then I would state uh, we should not trade at stock markets. Okay, so, but 
first of all, let's really start with what we know best. That is a chart. What we have here is, um, I think it's an H1 chart. And uh, as far as I remember, it has been a Euro Swiss form. But you see, it doesn't matter. The question is quite simple. What we see here are sequences of long and short candles. During the complete webinar, I will never talk about the size of those candles. If I would go into that detail as well, then it would be even more complicated to get those statistics that clear, because um, then we would um, suffer from, from the limited numbers once again. But it will be enough that we just talk about long and short candles. So, you know, those green candles are long candles and the red one are short candles. And we have those long sequences, which I later will call pure sequences, like one, two, three, four, eight. No, that was wrong uh, numbering. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, seven candles in a row short. Then a long candle and a short candle once again. So seven in a row. I think maybe everybody of you can calculate what is the probability for having such an event that we have seven candles in a row being short. So the math, the math behind is quite easy. It's just two power seven, which is 128 and then um, one by that value, and that is 0.8%. So let's call it 1%. So every 100 candle, something like that might happen. And if that would happen, it could be pure randomness. But we have a lot of those kind of sequences and even other sequences like uh, long short or short long or whatever. Later, we will go up to four candle sequences. And I don't call them candle formations in a way uh, like like um, three, three black uh, crows or something like that. So the candlestick patterns in that way. No, we just distinguish long, short, and uh, then any combination of what we can get. And the question is, if we find something, for example, like just as a hypothesis, two candles are red. Normally, the pure randomness for the third candle is quite easy. It's once again 50-50. So even if we have had 100 red candles for the next statistics, it's still the same, 50-50, because there is no memory. Um, and that is a pure statistic. It's always 50-50. It's I know it's against our human brain and it's against our intuition, but anyhow, it's 50-50. But if we will find something different for stock prices, hey, that would be cool because then we have an edge. Because then we know if two, if we have two short candles in a row and we find out that maybe we have an edge for a long candle for the third one. That would be a trigger for a long, long trade. Or at least we know that for the next candle, we can expect with a little bit higher probability that kind of candle. And if that comes true, hey, we have a perfect story, a perfect story. And that is exactly something we are looking for. So that's what we aim. That's what we want to achieve. Do we? The answer is yes. But let's see. A little bit more about that pure randomness. It's to have all those basics really um, clear. If you throw a coin, then the probability for getting a hat, I'm not really 100% sure that if, if in English you throw a coin that you still are talking about hat and numbers, that is at least the one-to-one -one translation from German. Uh, we call it hat and number. Um, but I think everybody knows what I mean looking to a coin. And later I will call that hat just the one. And the number I will call a zero. And Unfortunately, I'm a little bit inconsistent, uh, um, in, 
uh, not uh, consistent here because sometimes I call it a, a zero and sometimes a minus one um, representing a short candle. But anyhow, uh, it will be clear what I mean. So, but throwing a coin, we know the probability, the probability is 50-50 or in other words, it's 50%. What does it mean? For example, throwing twice a hat exactly in that sequence, then the probability is 25%. So it's 0.5 square. It's quite easy. And all the other sequences, I wrote them down here. Uh, you can you can easily calculate. Um, so um, head and number is both 50%. And then we have those sequences like 10, 0, 0, 01, or 11, one, one, or 0, 0. For all those sequences, the probability is 25%. Um, so don't take my formula here one to one because then uh, yeah it would look like that that uh, I'm not good in in mathematics but um, it's a little bit um, just um, illustrating what I mean and all those three candle formations like one 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 zero up to zero 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 three short candles in a row for all those combinations the pure randomness is exactly 12.5 percent that's obvious and i think straightforward within the excel sheets later we need something else we need to talk about a bias why let me go two lines further here you you know for example if we talk about ducks or f ducks then we know that ducks has a bias it has a long bias like uh, stock companies in general and so there is no question there is the long bias and for all the other indices as well so that means finally long candles are in favor they have a higher probability so we 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 need that kind of um formulas here not only for 50 50 we need them for any kind of probability if we have such an edge uh, on a one candle so if you have more long candles and short candles that i simply call here bias and then the probability for those sequences is a little bit different now so and the, the formulas are quite easy for then throwing a hat the probability is, for example, 60%. It's simply P. Throwing the number is just 1 minus P. And to have now two hats in a row, so two long candles, then it's just P times P. And exactly the opposite is 1 minus P times 1 minus P. So um, I think it's obvious how that is calculated. And we need that kind of calculation because if our our symbol, our underlying, which we want to investigate, then that might have a bias. And if so, then uh, we can um, calculate that bias, and then we can translate that into uh, a bias for special sequences. Good. But as I mentioned, a little bit um, off the record, so to say. So now we go for that game schnick schnack schnuck because it's a little bit illustrating if something is dominated by human, then even such a pure random driven game like that schnick schnack schnuck is getting predictable, at least for humans, not for for um, so playing against a human, not not playing against a computer. Then we still have uh, the the fifty fifty probability and that is, um, analysis has not been done by myself it has been from computer scientists of the chinese cheyang university probably pronounced wrong uh, but anyhow um and now now that i will switch to that document i, I know it's in in german but um just uh, i will translate uh, the findings so once again um, if you see now here the picture then you might recall that kind of game even in other countries i hope at least like scissor against representing a stone so a feast is a stone and uh, in this case um the stone wins that game so for that guy it would be a, a one um and 
um, the third element um, <clears throat> is paper, and paper uh, wins against um, the stone uh, because it's uh, wrapping up the stone, and the scissor uh, wins against uh, the paper because it can cut it, uh, cut uh, that. And now the statistical observations of human playing that game are the followings. The first is if a man, a boy, is playing that game, he has a bias for stones. So if you are playing against a man, you should use more often the paper because men have a tendency to that hard stone. You see why maybe there's a reason behind. Or the next rule here, the next finding is that um, winners try or often go for the same symbols. So if they have luck with the, their choice, then they use the same symbol for the next trial. And on the other hand, um, if somebody loses, then he uses opposite uh, elements. Or another observation is that beginners of that game, so unexperienced people, they have a tendency to don't use the same symbol twice. Okay, that's good, because that cuts down my, my selection. Because if I know last uh, round uh, somebody um, chooses scissors, okay, no, most probably next not, and so on. And if you know those edges, then you can finally win that game. You know? how that adapts to um, to trading. If we find something similar and it's human driven, so to say, hey, that's cool, then we have something for our trading activities. So therefore, I just want to share with you uh, even the German article. I know it, um, it, maybe the one or the other uh, could understand it and the link is still here and uh, in, in the PDF document. So um, then finally we can use Google Translator, for example. So when we want to start now, we first go for the pure randomness because we, we need some numbers. We need to get a feeling of deviations even if we have pure randomness. So that's our first task. So because later we want to see deviations from that randomness, but they have to be significant. And that question, that statistical question, is something statistical significant is hard to judge. It's really a nightmare in most cases. And you can calculate a lot for that, but we do it practically just with an Excel sheet and then we get a feeling what it means um, to have um, deviations from randomness. So let's start. So we go for Excel, Excel and let's start with something which we later use for D1 candles. So let me first zoom a little bit more in that you can understand that Excel sheet and all the other Excel sheets have the exact same content. And um, let me first put the picture a little bit away uh, that you see what I have done here. And first of all, um, that we have here something which uh, sounds like date and um, time is only because it uh, stems from, from other Excel sheets. It's, what I have done here is I put random numbers. Those random numbers are between zero and one, and that can be done in Excel uh, straightforward. And I have uh, here close to 4,000 um, random numbers, and then I have a threshold. That threshold is 0.5, and if the number is above 0.5, then it's a minus one, later representing a short candle. And if um, the number, the random number is below the threshold, then um, it's illustrating um, this long behavior. And then it gets here a plus one. And now I have investigated for specific candle sequences. Let's have a look. So within that P1, I look for 
long candles, so to say. Okay, if my candle is a long candle and P1 is a single candle formation, so it's only one candle, then it's a one. Okay, and if not, it's a zero. The same I do for short candles, representing here named by P minus one. Okay, um, same now we look for minus ones. And now it gets more interesting. Here, P11, I'm looking for long, long sequences. Um, do we have it? Here. You see, here we have a long, long sequence, and then it's illustrated here by that one. And then later we count uh, all those formations. And we go for a P minus one minus one, which means, okay, the two candles in a row, both have to be short candles, and so on and so forth. You can imagine what P111 means, and so on and so forth. But now let's do the statistics. You see, what I've done is I have count um, all those um, P1 occurrences and the P minus one occurrences and so on. And then I get a probability. And in this case here, okay, <laughs> I'm um, because the threshold is at 50%, it's not a big deal that um, my P1 candles are close to that. Um, so it's close to 50%. But the uh, let's call it the, the should value and the is value. And we know that the should value is for pure randomness is simply 50. And what I've done next is I calculate the deviation from the pure randomness. And that's at 2.6% here. So it's um, both numbers uh, minus and divided uh, by one number. So it's a, a percentage deviation. So you see, since we have a limited number of, of um, candles here, close to 4,000, it's not perfect representing by represented by 50%, of course, because um, whenever I do a new selection, so new um, random numbers, I get a little bit different deviations. But you see, finally, what I have within the graph here is the deviation from the pure randomness. And what I can do already here in that Excel sheet is I can manipulate. I can say, okay, there's a bias. Let's say 50, uh, 55%. And um, still the, the, the Excel sheet is doing something uh, similar. So that means those random numbers are close to those 55%. But if you go for higher candle formations, we find already higher deviations, at least sometimes. So if I go for a new sequence, I can do it just by pressing F9, uh, then I get new um, random numbers. And the only thing I want to do here, and I go back to more close to um, unbiased, um, that we have a feeling of what kind of deviations occur even in a pure random behavior. That's the reason showing you those um, bars here, because when we investigate in the next step, now real stock prices, um, so Forex uh, prices in that case, um, we have to know what might happen if we go for a selection of 4,000 uh, candles. And now we have a feeling. It's not a mathematical proof, but at least we know a little bit. Good, so that's the starting point. We know complete randomness. And later we go for H1, then we have more candles, and then those deviations become smaller. Or in other words, if we investigate it's the same for stock prices and we have a higher amount of candles, then we have better statistics, then we can even look for smaller deviations because um, they are um, then significant. So, okay. So the next part is now, let's go for real stock prices. Oh, no, that's already the observation. Uh, I have to do it. Sorry, I go into, let's go for Euro, US dollar um, on D1 base. So now the Excel sheet um, starts, of course, here 
you see with real stock prices, or in this case, a euro US dollar. And we have the, the typical nomenclature of open, high, low, close. And yeah, um, of course, I simply calculate, um, I do the comparison between close and open. And um, yeah, if it's higher than, it's a long candle. If it's lower than, it's a short candle. Now the first important we, um, remark here. What I have done before is I have deleted all zero candles. So all those candles with the behavior of open equals close, I have thrown out of the statistics. Why? It would make the picture much more difficult because then we have not only two cases, we have three cases, long, short, and um, um, a nothing candle, a, a zero candle. So I throw them out because then it's easier. It, they are not that many, really. But um, the statistics is, is um, easier in that way. The other possibility would have been to say, okay, if uh, close equals open, I call it a long candle, but we know that's wrong. So mm, therefore I deleted all those candles. But the next step here is exactly the same what we did previous. So with the pure randomness. So let's first have a look here to, we have already a, a deviation from randomness. Um, for long candle and short candle. So even for Euro US dollar, we have a small 1%, it's not really significant, long bias. When we later show, uh, go to the, the FTAX, then it's 3%, <laughs> so 53. It's not that huge, but there is already a, a significant bias. Of course, um, if we have um, a little bit more long candles, then we have to have a little bit less uh, short candles. And for those short values, we use as what we can expect for 1-1 one, one candle. So for 1-1 one, one formations, long, long formations, that is um, calculated directly out of um, the percentage of long candles. So you said P square, exactly what um, is written here. But now let's first look to the complete picture here. So that is, we, we see we have some specific candle formations which have really deviations from what we would expect from pure randomness. So let me turn back to, to our real random. Okay, it looks like this one here. Hmm. And Euro US dollar looks like this. So, okay, let's have a look. Bar number three. Bar number three is long, long. And bar number four is short, short. So what does it mean? So if you have a deviation to the minus here in this case, so the observation is that long, long candle formations are um, a little bit too rare, too seldom, too uh, not that often as they should be. And of course, that means we have a higher probability to find long short or short long. Okay, that's already telling us something. Those long long sequences are a little bit under representative, represented here. And even those other deviations are interesting as well. Seven, eight, one, two, three, four, seven, eight here. It's a one, 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 and minus one, minus one, minus one. <clears throat> so long, 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 short, short, short. Same observation. Um, those, the occurrence of those pure se sequences, later we'll call them pure sequences, like always long or always short, um, they, we, 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 we have two less of them. And finally, for, for here, uh, the four sequence, I've only investigated the pure four sequences here, um, same picture, two less. 
That's interesting. So that's already a deviation from randomness. Later we'll show that this is a real edge. Okay, that's Euro US dollar. Oh, let's look for something else. Another underline. And let's look what we can find there. Good. Let's do it. US dollar, Japanese yen. Oops. You might think, is it the same picture like Euro US dollar? Uh, answer, not the same, but quite similar. Let me jump back to Euro US dollar. Okay, it's not really the same, but quite similar. That's interesting. So once again, we have, and the scale is always the same, by the way, it's always a minus 25% up to 20, uh, plus 25%. That's interesting. Those pure sequences are too rare. Not that often as expected statistically. That's interesting. So same observation for two underlines. Good. Next one. Let's go for something totally different. Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. Where's the D1? There. Here we go. Okay. It's not exactly the same. It's a little bit different now. But we have a tendency for the same. So you see, it's not that well pronounced. It's close to what is um, possible just by, by deviations um, because of limited size, so limited number of candle, but it has a tendency into the same direction. Let's go for Euro Japanese yen. And now, first time, no, that's not Euro Japanese yen D1. That's what we want to have here. Okay, now we have something really different. Euro Japanese yen is behaving to, for that kind of analysis, purely random. Honestly, that would have not been my expectation. I would have expected that especially Euro-Japanese yen would show up more deviations. But um, an analysis is an analysis, so there are the facts. So I can, um, I have an intuition about that, but I have been wrong. So that is what I would, would expect for pure random behavior. It's similar to, to the Excel sheet with uh, real, really throwing coins. So for that kind of um, underlying Euro Japanese yen, we don't have an edge on D1. You um, might think that uh, if I, um, say already for D1, the story might become different for H1. But finally, I promised to have a look for ducks as well. So here's the ducks, mm, not that well pronounced. <clears throat> there are some tendencies, three and four is minus, eight and nine is minus, and 16, that is uh, uh, four short candles in a row, is um, yeah, a little bit too rare in comparison to random. And that bias is already corrected here. <clears throat> so all is, everything is done bias corrected. So we know we have 53% of long candles um, <clears throat> since we are looking for ducks. And of course, the ducks has a long bias. So mm, that candle is, in, uh, that bar here is interesting that we have sequences like minus, 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 um, then that candle is underrepresented, at least a little bit. So um, we can draw, draw our first conclusions here and our conclusions for D1. And I can already promise you H1 is even more interesting. So let's go for observations. So we can... I can um, to our conclusions. So for Euro, US dollar, US dollar, Japanese yen, Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, we have for those pure sequences, um, we know they are a little bit too rare. What does it mean once again? That would mean if I would see, for example, two long candles in a chart, 
then the probability to have a short candle being next is higher than 50-50. Now, exactly that comes true. <laughs> uh, what is maybe our principal intuition that after 100 times <clears throat> long, there must be a short candle next. But now it's it's proven, it's it's derived statistically, and that is interesting. So your Japanese yen is really quite random, um, and the FTAX is a little bit similar to your US dollar, but not that well pronounced. But let's go for H1. First, once again, the pure coin statistic. And the only thing I want to, why I show you, now we have here uh, close to 100,000 candles. So that means we have um, close to, or oh, it's uh, close to 90,000 um, uh, candles. The only thing I want to show you here is that the deviations because of the limitation of having uh, 90,000 candles, those deviations now become much smaller. You see those small bars here, uh, and even if I get new random numbers, always those bars are really small. So we can even look now for smaller deviations being significant. Let's start once again with H uh, with Euro US dollar. And it's this picture. Hmm. Strange, isn't it? It's the same picture more or less, than the D1 of Euro, US dollar. Strange. I have no real exp explanation, but I don't care. I have an observation. I have an, let, let's go a little bit, um, this one. So once again, those pure sequences have a tendency of being too less, too rare, too seldom. Interesting. So we have the same kind of observation on D1 as on H1. Pure candle sequences do not happen random. So there are deviations. And always deviations are our chance for trading. Okay. Um, now let's jump to, to some other um, to some other uh, underlyings here as well. So that's um, H1 for Euro, US dollar. And um, I don't go to everything, but uh, let's first go here for Euro, Japanese yen. And now we have the same observation once again as for the other. So it's really interesting that we have for all those underlyings the same kind of observation. And I can um, tell you First, I have done this kind of analysis. I didn't believe it. And then I double check everything. Then I even go, I went for, for artificial stock prices or artificial uh, Forex pairs like US dollar, Euro. So I, I um, created that one as well in looking, hey, what's now? And so on and so forth. It's like, what I have here on my screen. It's the same for um, US dollar, Japanese yen, and it's the same for Australian dollar, Canadian dollar uh, on H1 base. There might be some stories, and I could create them, that we have that kind of behavior for, for um, pure sequences are being to where, but okay, I can tell you those stories, but I cannot prove them in that way in, 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 um, in case of a story. What I have is the statistics and that's what is on the screen. So we can draw our conclusions for H1 as well. Um, and funny enough, now it's quite easy. Uh, it's for all. So you will Japanese yen now exactly like Euro, US dollar. So we have, we know what um, pure sequences are to wear. But now the question is, is it always the same over time? Or 
what if we would create something like an equity curve out of that kind of behavior? That's a cool question. Let's do it. So let's go for Euro, US dollar here. And now the only thing I have to do is I have to jump to the right <laughs> because I've done it already. Let me, um, I hope you can see at least right now. Now I put that one, I, um, I move the, the chart. Uh, to the left. Now everything gets slow here on the computer because I have, uh, you, you saw that I have uh, 10 or 12 uh, Excel sheets open and um, having that huge Excel sheets simultaneously open uh, is always a nightmare for any computer. Um, so I hope it will be fast enough to have it on the right side, uh, on the left side in this case. But now I think I have enough here. So what I have done and what does it, that equ pseudo equity curve showing you? So what I did, it's meant for the 111 statistics, the triple long candles in a way that we know that if we have already two long candles, then we know that for the third candle, we have a bias to the short because triple long are too rare. Okay, that means I now look, and therefore I have already uh, highlighted um, the formula here, I look for the cell K9. K9 is a triple long, uh, is it a double long. P11. So we look whether we have already two long candles, and if so, we expect the next candle to be a short candle or at least a short behavior. So, therefore, from that point in time, based on that close of that candle, I look for the next one now in the future. So, F10 minus F9 divided by F9 only means, okay, it's uh, the percentage change of the next day. And since I expect the short behavior, I multiply it by minus one uh, so that my equity finally goes north and not south. And that I have done, that kind of calculations for all candles of all 90,000 candles, and then simply summing those up. And that's what you find here. And that is one example. I can do the same for other as well. So I can change my investigation, for example, to I look now for, um, in, uh, for double short. That's the next one. K uh, now gets an L. And if we have a double short, then we would expect next along. Okay, so no minus anymore. So that's the new formula. And now we 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 think that after two short candles, the next one should have a bias to the long. Okay, now let's copy that formula uh, down here and um, I hope it's doing it. Yes, now we have a new equity. Perfect. That's good. So we have a real statistical edge. The, because you know, I'm, I'm honest with you here. That is an edge. If we would just trade exactly that kind of expectation, you know, trading means we have to include costs like spread, commission. I can tell you it's not enough. It's not already enough for a mechanical system which is purely doing what we have in that Excel sheet. Just open long candle, a long trade after short, two short candles and so on. It would not be profitable but only because of the costs, not because the edge is there. So we need additional elements in order to create 
a real profitable trading strategy. But the good thing is we know what we can do. We know that we can work with stop losses, with take profits. We can maybe use risk reward ratios bigger than one, smaller than one, and really create trades out of that idea. Because the edge is already there. That's clearly visible with that chart going north. That we know. So we need one step further. That's not for today's webinar, but we have already an edge. And to have an edge would help you already for your discretionary trading. Because you can always have a look for, let's say, the last two days. of, um, And if you see two, it's for Euro, US dollar, for example, two long candles, then at least you might say, for today, I look for short opportunities for intraday trading. So what you do during the day. You can use it as a bias for your decisions. And that's already worth a lot to have that kind of bias that can help you. And it's quite easy to get those rules. That kind of statistics you can do by your own now. Um, and either you, you create the same Excel sheets by your own, which is really not a big deal. Um, or as I mentioned, you send me an email and I'm um, will send those Excel sheets to you. But it's a clear and easy story. And it's impressive, at least for me, to find for a couple of underlyings exactly the same conclusions, the same kind of deviations, in a sense that pure sequences are a little bit too rare. Interesting. Good. So let me summarize what we have learned today I know it's a little bit more statistics today, but and not directly the new trading, brilliant trading strategy. But it's showing you that it's not that difficult to, to come to conclusions with a small exercise in Excel, for example. So we know now that our stock prices, stock means here Forex as well, do not behave like pure randomness. That's very good to know because otherwise we would have no chance in trading because nobody can beat the, the pure random, the pure randomness. So therefore it's good to know that. And we can find edges for, and I've not done it for the complete universe of, of uh, underlyings, but uh, we, we it's quite easy to to get those to derive those edges for different different underlyings and different time frames. And sometimes we have even the same conclusions for different time frames and different underlyings, which is really a cool story. Is that already a mechanical trading strategy, like like um, that you can just follow it? No. Um, because the, the cost will take the profit or will, will, will eat the profits. Um, but we have an edge. And that's already worth a lot. We will later include stop loss, take profits, and of course the costs. And then we will create um, real trading strategies out of that um, story, out of that um methodology or starting point, but mm, something for the next webinars. But you might use already that kind of information and for your typical underlyings, maybe you are a gold trader or uh, an oil trader. Do the same job for, for your underlyings in order to have some specific edge for your next day trading decision, even intraday. Why not? Give it a chance, and it's easy to do. So if you want, um, you can have those Excel sheets, the slides. Just send me an email. You know my contact address here, as dot Friedrichowski at JFT Brokers. And you see, it was a little bit mathematics, but it was worse to do because we have an edge. And to have an edge is a key for trading. That's for today. I hope you found it interesting. Stay tuned for next one in two weeks. Then we talk about JFT Invest strategies. That will be interesting as well. You will see. Okay. 
I think um, I wish you really a pleasant, pleasant evening and um, hopefully see you again in two weeks. Bye-bye.